there's no leapfrogging the requirement of laying the right foundation. My topic is BOSS and Nigeria's healthcare. In all the pleading for help from private citizens by the federal government in a bid to stem any wild transmission that would lead to a pandemic within Nigeria of the coronavirus, one is tempted to ask why in 60 years of existence, no government has found it fit to develop the health sector. For now, all hands should be on deck to assist. That much I know, but I still ask, why did it have to get to this? The Secretary of Government, Boss Mustafa, revealed that he, did, he does not know or did not know the level of rot in the health sector. How then did he get his job as chairman of the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 and even stay at the job? How did Major General Buhari appoint such a man to that post and then make him the chair? Is the president not similarly oblivious of the state of our health care, having spent months at a time abroad whenever he requires treatment? The Sunday Times of London has written an article that aptly chronicles the penchant of African corrupt leaders for shopping sprees and medical treatment abroad. They poke serious fun at them and as they are now trapped in their countries in this time of COVID-19. Our very own Abakari, de facto number two in this government, apparently had to have his medical files transferred from doctors abroad after he tested positive for the virus recently enough. Suddenly, after 60 years of independence and years of banks surviving on Forex deals, they, along with their chief executives, as well as businessmen like Dangote, have forked out billions of Naira to help our situation. I say that these are strategic business moves by corporations who rode to success on the back of correct corrupt government dealing. We have to start to build good health centers, hospitals, and care homes. A difficult task now that Nigeria is broke. Where are our well-equipped sickle cell clinics, which need I have spoken about? What will happen to the isolation centers being hurriedly put up now? Will they remain and get better equipped as full-fledged healthcare institutions? What about pay for medical staff left to languish in poverty while members of our National Assembly live like kings. It's time to begin to rewrite our story and change our narrative. Let us even learn from our neighbors like Ghana. This week, Boss Mustafa, the secretary to the government, uh, said that he had absolutely no idea how, that this was how bad our healthcare system was. And he chairs the presidential task force on COVID-19. Uh, shocking that the president should uh, appoint such a man to such a job because he, does, he doesn't even know the state of the hospitals. How could he have been the one to talk about how we're going to deal with COVID-19? And even the president to have appointed such a man also does not know the state of health care. Anyway, he travels abroad every time he's ill. He can't now. He's trapped here. And um, you know that the Sunday Times was making fun of him and Abakari specifically and Abakari had to ask for doctors abroad to send his papers because he has tested positive to the virus and uh, he can't leave Nigeria. Well, that's what we know. And, um, you know, it's so sad. And we've had 60 years to do, to build hospitals and healthcare centers and all that. And uh, it's only now that all of a sudden uh, some rich men who are effectively government contractors, because banks are government contractors anyway, um, have brought out so much money, uh, you know, just to, as it were, to glorify their own, um, their own um, uh, charity giving, if that's the way to put it. And all this does not, you know, go well for Nigeria. Um, with, well, you know, what are we going to do about all this? I mean, our neighbors are doing a lot more progressive things yeah. and we're still yeah. here, you know. Yeah, um, for, for me, it first and foremost, is sad and very shameful. Mm -hmm. uh, a display of irresponsibility um, when people who are supposed to be in charge of something do not even know, you know, uh, what it is. And then um, it's instructive at this stage to mention that these were the same people that uh, vilified 
the first lady when she said even the clinic in the as in the, at the villa <laughs> does not have panadol <laughs> and so the chicken is gradually coming home My to friend. roost so and and so now they are all admitting mm. and for the secretary to the government of the federation to come out publicly to say he didn't know that the, it was this bad it means it is terribly bad and like about um, two weeks ago i talked about um the comparing some of um, the edifice you call you know efcc office and then um, the icpc you office to the, to the na national hospital what we call national hospital, hospital. Yes. You, you, specialist shameful specialist mm. hospitals you, you know so now the government is saying we didn't know it was this bad but the only my problem with all of this is not that he said he didn't know it was after all the government is an unaware government mm. but <laughs> there is no plan to say, okay, well, this is what we are doing. Now that we know it is this bad, this is the plan we are rolling out. Even the president in his broadcast talked about um, how they are going to, they're setting up a team to look at the economy and stimulate the economy, you know, after all of it. There is no concrete plan to say, you know okay, yes, now that we so know can I, can I, the health sector let, is let, bad. Let, let, me, let me This say, is what we're yeah, doing. I, and I agree with you totally. Um, and, and, and Chuka, thank you for, 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 for the advocacy mm -hmm. on this particular topic because it's, it's so crucial. You, I don't know if any of you saw the, the leader of uh, UAE when he, when he tweeted something about in the 21st century, it's not the military weapons, it's not this, it's not, yeah. the, it's not the size of your, yes. it is the quality of your health care yes. um, that is really a driver in terms of how you measure progress yeah. and how you measure a country's um, power. And we're seeing that. We're seeing that in, the, in America's diminishing status from a healthcare where you see healthcare workers using garbage bags and you know, not having enough you know, PPEs. Um, and not talk about Nigeria, let's, let's, you know, even though we're talking about Nigeria. But uh, just to demonstrate that fact, that going forward, as the world gets more people, more population, Nigeria is growing, uh, people are living in more slums, healthcare should be seen as a strategic national yeah, yeah. issue yeah. Yeah. and a measure of how strong a country, a country is. is. Let me come in very quickly because I think that's where the important. clock is yeah. ticking on us on this segment. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> just to quickly say that we need to just be looking at what can we do. And I think I remember Libras once saying, you know, people who govern us shouldn't be allowed to go abroad for, yeah. and they, they should. So I think we need to, we are the ones to put that demand That's on them. Ourselves. When the elections come, we say, look, we're not voting for anybody who has, doesn't meet these requirements. Number one, you can't go out to get health care. Number two, your children must be in, in school. It's us that are putting, we're not, we're not physically keeping them back, but we're saying you can't, you won't get our votes unless you tick these boxes. Because the only way the reality is going to dawn on them is if they're where we are, is if they're having to use that, then yeah, you see how quickly, pain. you see how quickly those people will I renovate agree. the school. Yeah. So we, we're not voting for anybody who is not using our healthcare system, using our schools, all those public facilities, we're not voting for you as good as an outsider. I think Uche is there. Yeah, Uche. Yeah, um, just quickly, I mean, considering how, you know, the state we found ourselves in, that we we're not ready, if this virus had really taken on a different, you know, outlook, we were definitely not ready. Um, it amazes me that even now, even though we have received a donation from the EU of about 50 million euros, I think it is, that the first thing we haven't thought to do is channel that into our hospitals and just, you know, because that for me is the only way we can actually measure what we're doing with the monies that we're receiving. We've heard we've re received so much money and yet nobody knows what the government is going to do with it. Well, I would have thought that they should take some of that and start showing us that they're improving some hospitals, they're upgrading some hospitals or they're even building new ones. But, you know, right now, I really don't think anything's going to change as far as I'm concerned. They yeah. think that COVID is going to finish and they're going to go back to their overseas yeah. health care. So, you know, I really don't know what we're going to do unless maybe we vote them out and vote people in but and change the constitution. But I don't see any change happening. And I'm sorry to be so pessimistic, but that's just the way I see it. Chuka. Yeah. We do what we can, and right now, we join our voices to yours on behalf of our health sector and health workers. We truly appreciate you and the daily sacrifices you make. Thank you. After the break, I'll be directing our attention to another aspect that is connected to our health. Some might say our mental and emotional health. Stay tuned.